Hey, what's up guys, Jeremy here. In the last video, I showed you how to create targets in your 3D environment. But we created those targets quite randomly. And honestly, in robotics, we try to be as accurate or precise as possible. Therefore, we need to be able to position those targets exactly where we want them. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Let's get started. We pick up exactly where we left. So we have our four targets and we have the, the target panel open for corner one. Before going into the accuracy thing, let's see how we can modify, generally speaking, the position of a target. So if you have a target like that, you can simply press Alt and you will see the same square and curved arrows appearing on the targets as you can see on the frame or on the robot TCP. If you press and hold Alt and move one of these uh, targets by, let's say, using the Y axis, you will see a semi-transparent robot appearing, showing you how the robot will behave if you, uh, let's say, leave the target right here. And if you press once on it, the robot will move there. So here, for some reasons, this is again activated. Perfect. If I move back the robot to its home position, so right click home. If I continue press, pressing halt and moving to the side, you will see that at some point I'm reaching the limit of the robot, so reach limits. And the target will, I can continue moving the target if I want, but it will kind of detach itself, itself from the robot and a red tool will follow showing you that this target is out of reach. You will also see if you look in your station tree, a warning sign appearing on top of the target uh, logo or icon to show you that this target is currently impossible to reach with that reference frame activated. Another way of changing a target position is simply to move the robot to a certain point and either pressing teach current position in the target panel or right clicking the target and pressing teach current position, just like that. So this way you can reposition approximately uh, a target like that. But if you want to be super precise and you already know the positions uh, you want to reach in space, so the Cartesian position and the rotation, you can always simply enter the values here. So let's say for corner one, we'll go for 600, we'll go for minus 150, we'll go for 450, let's say, and then zero in term of rotation. So minus 180, zero, minus 180. So X, Y, Z, and then rotation Z, Y prime, X prime prime. Like I said, we'll come back to the Euler angles here, but those represent a specific format of Euler angle. I can do the same with the other targets. So press F3, I'll go 600, and then 300, and then 450, zero. I'm using Alt to navigate or tab, sorry, to navigate from one text box to the other. So that's a, so a little trick. F3, 600, 300, 250, let's say, and then zero, just like that. And by the way, small trick here, uh, fairly new, like was released this year, a small, small thing. If you press control before clicking a target, the robot won't move to that position. So if you click just once on a target, it will move there. But if you press control and move, uh, press control and select a, a target, it won't move there. So that's an information that sometimes is useful because you don't necessarily want to move always. So sometimes you just want to select a target and do something with it without moving the robot there. So I will bring that here and then let's go for 600 and let's go for minus 150 and then 250 and then zero here. Perfect. So now we have our four targets that are accurately positioned. I can press escape to remove the semi-transparent robot. And then I can move from one target to the other, just like that. Super cool. Again, if you press one, it will do a linear motion. Um, if and only if this linear motion is physically possible, meaning that you're not crossing a singularity. 
I will have a video specifically on singularities later in the training, but for now, you only need to know that a singularity is a point that a robot can't cross with the linear motion. Generally speaking, you should, the, the one that you will face uh, the most often is a wrist singularity. This happens when uh, joint four and joint six get uh, gets aligned, uh, or when joint five reach zero. Uh, and RoboDQ, if you're just pressing here like that, RoboDQ won't tell you that there's a singularity. It will only tell you if you're trying to do a real motion in the program. This is what we'll do in the next video, create uh, motions. Uh, but you can spot it here. Let's say that I'm purposely placing myself in a singularity situation. Uh, I think this should do the trick. So if I go for 515 here instead of 450 for the top row, uh, and then let's say I go here, you can see here, instead of creating a straight line, it kind of create a curved line. This is because if I was to follow the straight line here, I would hit a singularity. Like if I bring the robot panel here, you will see if you look at joint five closely while the motion is running, you'll see that we are going very close to zero. In fact, we are going from one for min from minus 15 to 28 in joint five. So obviously we're crossing singularity. So to avoid that, when we're just moving around, RoboDK will create a joint motion in between if there's a uh, singularity, but if I we created a linear motion, it would simply pop up an error showing us that there's a singularity that we're crossing. Okay, that's everything for this video. I hope it was helpful. In the next one, we will start creating program and adding motions so that the robot can actively by itself move from one target to the other without us having to click on the targets. And at the end of the day, we need to create a, par a program if we want to be able to generate the real code for the robot and load it directly on the controller so that the real robot in real life do does the same exact motion as uh, the virtual one does. Okay, have a great day, guys.